As you know, I do a lot of different things to earn an income. Obviously, there is no money to be made on YouTube, at least for me. In 16 years of making YouTube videos, I've made a total of this much, and I have yet to meet a single person in person from YouTube. Hopefully that will change in the future, but in the meantime, we do what we can. Now, one of the things that I end up doing is repairing some of these obsolete circuit boards. This is actually out of a gate motor. And it's one of those things that you can't really get parts for it, and there's no compatible unit. Now, normally you would just replace the motor. But at this location, they have multiples of these, and every one of them has a problem. The fuse, it's not blown. I don't know what's wrong with this thing, honestly. I take the light over here, and I'll look at it, you know, just to kind of see what's going on. I can't see anything that's really bad. Actually, I take that back. Now, now it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of dirt, but it's nothing really obvious. You know, there's nothing on here that you can see. There's a little bit of sloppy solder work. It looks like somebody may have recapped or changed these capacitors at one time, because as you can see, there's some scratch marks. There's been some work done to it. And a lot of times with these units, you'll get work that's done. Who knows when it was done? They don't really label it or anything. And again, you know, it's like that. So what I have to do in this case, I did a little bit of examination and I found out that the problems actually were over here in the optocoupler, which is located right here. And I did that simply by measuring voltages. Now the problem is eventually you're going to have to desolder some of these components. And in order to do that, you need to have equipment where you can desolder. This is one of my favorites. This is the Pace MBT. Now, the great thing about this is that it is a very well-made unit. The space station, it'll last a lifetime. Really high quality. But you know what the bad thing about it is? It's a brand name. And anytime you have something that's a brand name, it's going to be massively overpriced. And they're going to cut corners eventually. Now, you can see over here how they cut corners. This plastic connector isn't the problem. But if you notice, it's got this really cheap edge with this really garbage little piece of plastic, and it broke, of course. Now, that doesn't really affect the operation. It's just that when you plug this in and you try to screw it down, you know, it just is wobbly. Now, here's an example of a cheaper model. And you'll notice that this one is actually higher quality. It has a nice, better molded piece. It even has a metal, although it's pot metal ring. This is far superior to this overpriced garbage. But that's not the worst of it, because again, when you open one of these up, the components that you find in here are top notch. This is a very good unit. But then this external stuff is garbage. They also use extremely cheap metal. They have a steel shank over here, and they have this really poor quality cast aluminum. It's probably mostly zinc, total garbage. And the worst part is, the heating element. Now this is the desoldering tool, as you can see here. And this has a little vacuum pump when you push this switch. It triggers the pump, which then pumps it into this little hose or the filter, and it sucks the solder up into a glass tube that's inside of here. You do that for removing components. So let's say you wanted to remove, for example, these capacitors. Well, in order to remove the capacitors, you're going to have to remove this solder. And if you don't know what solder is, solder is actually a alloy of different metals that melt at a low enough temperature where you can use some type of electric heating, or you could use, for example, a torch. But unlike welding, solder is not the same metal as a metal that you're joining. Now, welding is a chemical bond as well as a physical bond, and so is soldering. But it actually creates another alloy so the solder, which is alloy in itself, then alloys with the different metals. In this case, the metals used would be copper, and generally some type of copper alloy, maybe brass or whatever. You can also solder steel, because steel is iron, and when iron is clean and free of oxide, the solder will bond with it. But in order to get this out, these components go through holes, you have to pull them out, you have to use this to heat up and suck out the solder. Now, 
to apply new solder, you're going to use, and remember, although it sounds like S-O-D-E-R, solder, it's actually S-O-L-D-E-R. This is the solder. You can use different types. Now, as far as I remember, this is a rosin core C, S-O-L-D-E-R. And you'll melt this, and it will flow, and it will make a connection. Now, again, you're making a chemical and physical connection, which means you're going to get a good electrical connection. If you simply put two wires together and twist them together, you get an electrical connection. But you could have things like electrolysis, corrosion, other things happening, which causes that connection to fail. This also bonds the part to the circuit board, which is laminated between fiberglass, epoxy, and other materials, and the metals that are used to conduct the electrical current. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Now, as you can see, got a great soldering station. This temperature control works really nicely, but the tip basically burned off. Got old, it failed. So that needs to be replaced. And guess what? You can buy the part for this, but because it is a PACE, it is extremely overpriced. Just this little heating element is almost $200. I mean, seriously, I don't know what these people are smoking, but hopefully it's not the components that you're supposed to solder and desolder. So what I did a while back, I got one of these cheap, <clears throat> generic type soldering stations. Now this one does not have the vacuum pump in it, so I still have to use the paste for that. But it does have this heat gun that you can use for heating up components and also for heating shrink tubing when you make your connection. And it has the soldering iron. This is also temperature control. And notice, unlike the cheap plastic thing used in the paste, this one is a combination of plastic and metal. So this end is actually pretty good. And I remember paying about $60 for this whole thing like 10 years ago. And basically, it does the same basic concept. You just kind of screw it in there and tighten it down. And then it has a holder. Now again, the holder is not as good. The paste one is metal and it's attached to the unit. So this is far superior. But again, it always gets loose. It only has one screw holding it. This is a cath I mean, a extruded aluminum housing. Much better. This is just some kind of steel that's painted. But again, it's a lot cheaper. This thing, at the time, I think it was close to $1,000 for the setup. This was like less than 70 Now the problem is, this will work. When I go to turn it on, I'm getting a 5 error, which is the same error that you get when the thing is disconnected. All right. Now, as you can see, the error is still there. So what's the big deal? Well, I'm just going to have to replace this, right? Well, sure. I can buy this whole soldering handpiece for less than 20 bucks. I think I looked on eBay, it was like $17 or less, depending on where you get it from. But the thing is, I was wondering, what is the difference between this and this? Well, obviously this one seems to be more substantial, and you'll notice it is a bit thicker, so that means the heating element is going to be more robust. That's good. But is it worth 10 times as much? I don't think so. Now, here's another one that I have. This was one of the older ones that went bad. And as you can see, I went ahead and disassembled it. Now what I did, over here, this cable goes to a circuit board, and of course the other end of it is going to be this connector. And again, this part is fine, and I checked it with a meter, everything checks out, even the body and everything's in good shape. The problem is here, at the tip. I put this in a bag so I can analyze it in the future. Now, I'm gonna dump this out, and you can see what we have here is the actual heating element end. This goes inside of the tip of the handpiece. So, if I was to take off this tip from the handpiece, unscrew this, and you can see it's got the tip on the end there. This right here is this part. And if I pull this out, you can also see the circuit board that it's attached to. So you have to unscrew this second piece of plastic, and there it is. All right, so that's the end piece. And it's soldered down into this board. 
And if you'll notice, this has four wires. Now, what do these wires do? Well, inside of here, you have two ceramic tubes. So we're going to pull this apart. This one has been loosened up because it failed. And if you'll notice, the heating element is nothing but basically nichrome wire wrapped around the ceramic tube. And you'll notice it's only on this end because notice how this part of the tube still has the electroplating. It still looks like new. And this end is darkened. You know that old concept of entropy? The more you heat up something, the more disordered it tends to become. And you can see the oxidation taking place. Now, all this has, and there's one wire that's actually missing. It's right over here. It has burned off. So this coil used to go over here, the wire burned, because it either overheated or it short-circuited to the case and then burned up. There's still three wires in here. The wires actually go into a ceramic tube that has holes in it. So the individual wires go in and then they put insulation on it. Only this wire on the outside runs on the outside and they use this sort of braided, I don't think they use asbestos, it's some other type of mineral fiber that won't burn when it gets hot and it connects there. And then it goes to that circuit board. Now, this means that all these soldering irons, no matter how expensive they are, are made using the same technique. You have two wires that go to the heating element. That's this one and the one that came off. And you'll notice there's two more wires that actually go through to the tip. Now, let me see if I can get this thing to focus right. I don't know if it will. But the tip, if you look carefully at it, you'll see there's a tiny little dot at the end of that tip. And that's what we call a thermistor. The thermistor is actually what senses the temperature. It's a resistor, and what it does is, as the temperature goes up and down, the resistance changes. So that sends it back to the base unit, which then will tell it what the temperature is. Now, normally when you turn this on, it'll start at zero, it'll work its way up, and you can set your temperature based on you know, pushing these buttons. You, know, you can go up or down. I don't know if this actually works, but... That's the whole idea. So, again, the problem that I'm having with all of these units is that this is a consumable item, and it doesn't matter how expensive or how cheap it is. Eventually, it's going to burn out because you're heating up metal to a high temperature. That causes oxidation. Oxidation, that breaks it down, and over time, it eventually weakens to the point where it burns out. Just like an old-time incandescent light bulb. They don't live forever. I mean... They'll last a long time, depending on how they're built. Now, the thicker this wire is, the longer it'll last. The problem is, the thicker the wire is, the lower the resistance, and therefore, you're going to draw more current at the time that you use it. So you have to have a bigger power supply. So it's kind of a trade-off. You could build something like the old Weller soldering iron that has a heavy sort of a copper or brass wire coming out. I don't have one with me but it will last indefinitely and if it goes bad you just change that little u-shaped thing and it's back to normal another option is to have one of these these are the old soldering guns they used to have back in the 1980s you put a reel here and then use this trigger to move the soldering and you'll notice that even compared to this overpriced paste garbage this one is actually bigger so the coil of wire inside of this one is larger that's probably one of the reasons why this still works and these don't and this was also very cheap. I think it was less than 20 bucks when they had it on sale. So, again, the amount of money you pay for something is not going to determine the quality necessarily, although it does tend to correspond. So anyway, I'm going to have to find another source for this. Now, I wish I could find a generic replacement for these, or if I had the time, I may even try to make my own, because I really do like this Pace soldering station. But because Pace is such a bunch of crap and they cater basically to institutions like big corporations and governments where money is no limit. They can borrow money so cheap, they'll just replace everything. And they produce because whether they're doing technical work or whether they're manufacturing, they have the ability to recover that. But for us hobbyists, this, useless. Again, the only reason I got it is because I got it cheap at a... At a uh, was a ham fest or yard sale or whatever it was. And I use it until it breaks. And now I'm still using it as a desoldering station. But 
that's about all I can do with it. And then this one over here, if I can fix it, great. If not, it goes into the parts bin. I'll just get another one. So again, you know, if you're into electronics, sometimes getting the highest quality stuff isn't going to really work for you. You may have to go with the cheap stuff and work with that. So anyway, I'm going to continue. I'm going to try to find a solution to this. I got a stack of these circuit boards that I need to work on. And, you know, every one of these boards I can repair is probably, well, I charge by the hour, but it'll be like 50 or 100 bucks or whatever it is. And that'll be good because if I can get those done, that'll give me a, a decent income for the day. Otherwise, if it stops raining or doesn't rain at all, I may go and take a second crack at the van, trying to get the air conditioning working on that. And maybe I can put this thing to use pretty soon. So anyway, I just want to give you a Friday video, show you what I'm doing, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right? Bye.